Welcome to the Choose You Netcast. This is Jim Langlois with the word from Joshua 24, 15. Choose you this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's my prayer that this netcast will encourage and cheer you on as we join forces to draw the line in the sand, defending our faith and our households in the resurrection power of Jesus. Join me each weekday as we dig deeply into God's amazing word and bring up the rich treasures of his blessings. Are you ready? Choose you this day whom you will serve. But that's for me and my house, me and my house, me and my house. I said, choose you this day who you will serve. But that's for me and my house, me and my house, me and my house. Well, then, thank you for tuning in. We're continuing with our series on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then in the Amplified Version, it says, Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. Yep, it's the whole armor of God, and it has a specific purpose. Yesterday, we were talking about Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, which says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. In the evil day. Hmm. Is this an evil day? Do we live in troubled times? Are we witnessing the apostasy or the falling away of the church as prophesied in 1 Timothy? Listen to what Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Wow. So what are we to do in the evil times? We are to stand. It says it in both Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and verse 13. They both use the word stand. In the Greek, it's histemi, or H-I-S-T-E-M-I, which means to cause to stand, to set, to establish, to make firm, to fix, to uphold or sustain the authority or force of anything, to stand immovable, to stand ready or prepared, one who does not hesitate and one who does not waver. And Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 also uses the word withstand which means stand against, and it's the Greek word antihistomy, or anti-against, or to cause to stand, to bravely resist, to vigorously oppose, to set oneself against, to be face-to-face against your adversary, to stand your ground and take a battle stance. Wow! We're supposed to stand immovable against the wiles of the devil, and we're supposed to resist, oppose, and set ourselves against the evil day. Now back to our original verse of Ephesians 6, verse 11, which tells us we're supposed to stand against the wiles of the devil. This word wiles in the original Greek is methodia or methods. It means to lie in wait, cunning devices, deceit, craft, and trickery. And then continuing in verse 14, it says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. The pulpit commentary says, Our chief enemy does not engage us in open warfare, but deals in wiles and stratagems which need to be watched against and prepared for with peculiar care. Remember, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 talks about the evil day. It's a day of temptation and testing. It's not just a day that will be coming. It applies to that too, but it also applies to each and every day whereby temptation and testing could come. We're supposed to stand immovable against the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting of the devil, and we're supposed to resist, oppose, and set ourselves against the day and each day of temptation and testing. Let's read Ephesians 6.11 again. 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6.11 in the Amplified. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Well, I thought we were done with the belt of truth, but we're not. In verse 14, the King James Bible says to girt your loins with truth. But there's more here than meets the eye. I like how the Amplified Version interprets it. It says, stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins. Two important words we cannot slip by are girt and loins. When we dig deeper into these two words, we find the following meanings, or we could say types. The word girt and girded equals fastened and equipped, and the word loins and waist equals procreative power. Why is this important? Because in the natural, our procreative power is in our loins. It's the physical part of the body for reproduction. Well, like in the natural, we also have the power to procreate or birth others in the spirit that they might be born again and become new creatures in Christ. As Paul wrote to the Galatians in chapter 4, verse 19, he says, My little children, for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. In our effort to have children in the faith, if we're not of the truth, we will produce children with birth defects. It is most important that as we share Christ, we share the truth of God's word and God's word only. John Maxwell talks about the law of reproduction. He says it takes a leader to raise up a leader, and we produce what we are. Produce is a birth word. Yeah, isn't that true? I have a quote, too. It takes a lying cusser drunk to raise up and produce a lying cusser drunk, and it takes a Christian to raise up and produce a Christian. If our spiritual procreative power is not fastened and equipped with the truth of God's word, we will have children with birth defects. So, yes, this belt of truth is tantamount to all our armor. But as it represents the spiritual truth for our power to procreate, we must have the truth of God's word in our spiritual loins. Without the uncompromised word of God, we will actually produce illegitimate children. The belt of truth around our loins is very important. This is why Satan puts so much resistance to Christian evangelistic efforts, especially if they're from loins covered and protected by truth. He knows if he cannot stop the work, there will be more healthy baby Christians born into the kingdom of God. He's not concerned about Muslims, Buddhists, Hindu, New Age, Scientology, Sikhism, Unification, Wicca, and so on. He is only concerned with Christianity. Why? Because he knows the truth. Remember, Jesus came into the world to bear witness to the truth. That's from John chapter 18, verse 37. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And we must be born again, not of corruptible seed, which is what 1 Peter says in chapter 1, verse 23, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Let's make sure the seed of our loins is incorruptible. Let's not have spiritually illegitimate and deformed babies. Let's preach the truth of the word of God to every creature that they might become true new creatures in Christ. What is the seed? The seed is the word. Luke chapter 8 verse 11 says, Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Let's produce children for the kingdom of God and not for another kingdom. This is why we are to study and show ourselves approved. If we don't know the word, we'll not be able to lead with the word. We'll not be able to plant the seed of the word. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Wow, so how important is this belt of truth? I think you know. And maybe that's why the armor of God starts with it. Now let's move on to the second half of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 14, which talks about the breastplate of righteousness. It says, stand therefore, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, with each strategy and deception of the devil, 
He has a specific targeted purpose to shut God's people down. The armor of God is not just some random outfit to protect in a street fight. This is a spiritual war, and Satan's approach is not to throw punches as fast as possible or thrash his arms around in every direction, hoping he finally hits something before he gets hit. No, he's intelligent, dubious, focused, and fights with as much stealth as possible to remain deceptive to such a degree that no one knows he was the one who made the shot. He starts with lies and rumors to replace truth, being the word of God, anything to discredit the truth of God's word. His next target is our heart and our lungs, our faith, our passion, and our voice, the center of our being, the real us, the center of our power and life. The breastplate piece of God's armor starts from the neck and goes to the end of the ribs. It's a chest plate that protects the heart and lungs. It's called the breastplate of righteousness. Our righteousness is one of the most important parts of our armor. Without it, there's no reason to put the other parts on. Well, what is it? It is our right standing before God. It is the confirmation of who we are in Christ. It is the divine exchange of our sins for his righteousness. It is our new character based on his righteousness. The Amplified says it well in Ephesians 6.14. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity and of a moral rectitude and right standing with God. Think about it. Integrity, moral rectitude, and right standing before God. Me? You? Are you kidding? No, I'm not. It's the truth and nothing but the truth. In all actuality, God has declared us righteous through Christ. But Satan wants us to believe we're condemned. It's the difference between righteousness and condemnation. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You see, if Jesus ever sinned, he would have no righteousness to exchange. If you believe Jesus sinned, I feel sorry for you. You're hopeless and without any chance to ever see the kingdom of God. However, if you believe God sent his son, who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, then you have the ability to receive the greatest gift ever offered to man. It says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, For by one offering he has perfected forever those who were being sanctified. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. In order to reach the lost, we must know who we are in Christ. Our time is up once again, so we'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place, same channel, and we'll continue with the whole armor of God. I call you blessed. You have been listening to the Choose You Netcast with Jim Langlois. If you have enjoyed this program, you can find out more about Jim Langlois Ministries on the Master's House website at tmhnow.org. That's tmhnow.org. On the Media tab, you can listen to many more messages, subscribe to my daily devotional emails, and follow the link to my blog site. If you'd like to write me or become a financial partner with this ministry, my address is the Master's House, Post Office Box 1568, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. That's the Master's House, Post Office Box 1568, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. Online donations can also be made at tmhnow.org, and my email address is pastorjim at tmhnow.org. This is Jim Langlois saying be blessed, you and your whole household. Until next time. Choose you this day, but well, that's for me and my house, me and my house, me and my house.